If you like birds, the crop out project, RTS titles, or UI design, or sound design, maybe, uh, you're in the right place. We're going to be looking at the crop out sample project today, and specifically, we're going to be kind of zhuzhing up one of the sound effects, which is the build sound effect. Now, uh, in the project itself, the build sound effect is kind of basic. Uh, it sounds like this. really nothing happening there. Uh, it's just one single UI sound. Uh, specifically, it's this. Uh, there's a random uh, random value with a little bit of pitch shift, and it is this one harvest asset. Uh, and it plays in mono with like a cutoff frequency, like specifically to translate for mobile. And I wanted to do something a little bit extra and the cutout, uh, sorry, the crop out project is a really fantastic jumping off point here because it's all in blueprint. Uh, so if you're new to Unreal Engine or you're new to sound design or you're new to meta sounds, uh, this is the episode for you. We're going to be looking at these four specific files, three of which are in the project, which will be the Metasound UI select, the CUI style button, and the build confirm. And then we're going to be making or looking at the one I've made, which is this flutter select. Uh, in the end, that sounds like this. You can hear it has uh, a lot of life. It is just one bird sample, but you could add some stuff on top of this. Um, and ideally what's happening is the uh, there's a trigger here and it's actually a mono sample, but then it pans out towards one of the sides. So if it started on the left, it pans out further to the left. If it started on the right, it pans out further to the right, which I think adds a lot of dimension to the sound. And then we still have that same UI sound actually coming straight down the middle just to, to keep faith with the uh, with the original project. So uh, how does this work? Well, we've already talked about the MetaSound itself for the UI click. I'm gonna be triggering that, which is just down here. Um, you can open up the graphs tab and literally just pick one of the MetaSound's graphs so you can kind of st stitch them all together. Um, and I just have a mono source kind of going to dual mono in this stereo mixer, um, just going to the left and right channel and then that'll be feeding out to the output. So all the rest of this stuff uh, is good old fashioned me. Um, now, what's happening here? Well, we pick a random value between zero and one. Uh, this is to take the leftmost value and the rightmost value of the speakers and make a new variable by sort of pulling off this and creating a, or promoting to a graph variable, which I'm calling selected pan amount. And this is like the starting point. This is the starting point of where our, uh, where our sound originates. And now we're just going to be panning the bird layer, not the UI sound itself. Then we're going to have a trigger delay, which means that after one second, we're going to fire off uh, this out pin. And so when we start, when we hit play, which will be from clicking on the button, we pick a new sample, we start this trigger delay and we start an ADSR envelope, which is an attack, decay, sustain and release envelope. It um, takes 0 0.5 seconds to go from zero to one and then it goes down or it hangs around for 0 0.5 seconds and then releases once we trigger the release, which is one second later. So when this triggers, what happens here is that we, uh, we start immediately we pick a place and we send the envelope out to this out envelope, uh, which is just another variable, just another float. Um, it'll all make sense in a moment. Now, the reason we do this ADSR envelope, we actually don't need this whole part, but I think it sounds much cooler. So without this ADSR envelope, what happens is the sound picks a spot from the pan position and we just play it there. And it's a mono sound source that, that's there. UI sounds can exclusively be mono or stereo because they're not spatialized, uh, meaning they just are kind of headlocked to the player. But with the ADSR envelope, I can introduce a little bit of movement so I can place it in one spot and then kind of flick it across. And one of the amazing things about, you know, birds and, and this, this, this conveyance of movement that I think bird flaps, uh, they sort of do better than anything for me. I'm not sure what it is, but just the sound of like the birds flapping and how the how the frequency, it's probably some diffuse feather action, hashtag diffuse feather action um, thing going on there. But we pick a value uh, and we say if it's more than zero, 
uh, which is to the right, do this. And if it's less, do this. Uh, now, these are both the same sample. These, this is specifically for using this stereo panner here um, to alter it. And that will basically take the starting position. And then if it's on the left, uh, sorry, if it's on the... Uh, yeah, if it's on the left, we're going to take away the envelope. If it's on the right, we're going to add the envelope. So sort of just push it out. Uh, essentially, if it starts on the right, it'll push further out to the right. If it starts on the left, it'll push further out to the left. And so you never get this situation where it starts at one side and then crosses to the other side. It only it only pushes out, and that's just to save a little bit of stereo space um, in terms of spatial width for this plain UI sound that we have coming down dual mono, which will be like phantom center straight out the middle. Um, I think it's a really fantastic effect. The envelope itself will uh, will increase that change over time. So it will sort of go further um, and then it'll, uh, yeah, it'll just change position basically, um, which I think is really cool. And the benefit of that uh, is this this fantastic button where it kind of we kind of get a lot of spatial movement. Now you will hear it sort of start on one side and flutter around a little bit. Um, I could tweak this and you could definitely tweak this idea a lot, um, especially because at the moment with the it, it'll kind of go out and, and come back to a little bit of where it was before. Um, but you could maybe just have it keep going out as well, um, just based on whatever your envelope is. So if your sound is short enough, um, this will probably end a little bit further out than where it is, whereas if it's a little bit longer, it might come back again. In terms of plugging this in, if you haven't plugged one of these sounds in before, you start by looking for this UI select and grabbing some references for that UI select um, by looking at the reference viewer. You'll kind of see a few places. You'll see these style buttons and build confirms. Oh, well, this is for the flutter select. Um, this build and this build item. And you can kind of just start poking around here. So if I look inside the build tab, I can see this opens up some kind of blueprint. Haven't seen this thing before. It's for a common button style that's kind of contextualized into another blueprint. And I'm just like poking around looking for like sound and and hey presto, they've done a really good job and they actually have a pressed sound here, which is gonna be this UI select. Now, if I click this, it's actually gonna be for selecting the type of building. So you could go and apply this to a different types, but that's not what I'm gonna do right now. I'm actually looking for this place button in particular, uh, which I found by just kind of poking around a little bit more. We have uh, this place button. You'll see there's a pressed sound override and I can just drop in my flutter select there, meaning that when I place, click the place button, I get my flutter select. I could go into here and add it to this flutter select, but this again, again is like a common button style thing. Um, so be aware of like where you're adding these elements, like what, what's happening. The developers have even added some cool tool tips here. You should really check out the crop out sample project. The that's the whole blue um, meta sound. I was going to say blueprint. It's not even blueprint. It's uh, all done within meta sounds, and it gives us this really fantastic result uh, where we can add a little bit of movement to your UI sounds. Uh, I think they desperately need it a lot of the time. And something like this that is such a natural uh, sort of space, such a natural farm atmosphere, I think really, really benefits by adding a little bit of variance uh, to your UI sounds and making them a little bit more spatially interesting than just straight down the model, uh, straight down the middle mono sounds. Thanks so much for checking us out. See you next time.